It's good to see all of you here this morning. We're so thankful to have you with us. Uh, if you have your bulletins, you may want to grab them so you can see some of the announcements that we're going to be announcing. First of all, you've probably, some of you have certainly noticed the change. Your children are in here for the start of the service, and they'll be leaving to go to Children's Church at a later point, and Brother Mike will tell you when that is. So up to fifth grade, uh, if they want to go to Children's Church at a later point in the service, I'll be standing right there in the middle. They can come to me, and we'll walk to Children's Church together. Some things that are going on and some things that you might want to be updated about. First of all, a senior adult get-together. That'll be Tuesday, February the 15th. Soup, sandwiches, and salad are provided. They are asking if you're able to sign up in the hallway so they will know how to plan for that and the numbers that they will need to plan for. A ladies' Bible study. It's a seven-week study. It starts on the 17th, and they're asking you to sign up for that as well so they will make sure that they have enough books for everyone we do have some already ordered so if you will sign up for that we'd love to have you be a part of that the ladies are also doing a luncheon on the 24th at 11 30 once again sign up for that if you want to be a part of that so all of these things we're asking you to sign up not because we need to know but it helps us to know so that we can plan our all-in-one worship service march the 6th is going to be an opportunity for us to be together we'll have sunday school at 9 30 church service at 10 30 and then we will have a meal afterwards so plan on being a part of that plan on bringing some food and staying afterwards and enjoying some time with each other as well there are some other things coming up in march with some kids game nights as well uh, summer's coming two opportunities in there for you to see how quickly that is coming graduate recognition if you have a graduate uh, we'd love to recognize them and honor them see myself or see miss cindy and we will get you some information on that and then we want you to go ahead and set your calendars for VBS, which is going to be June the 5th through the 9th. So let's pray as we begin our service. Almighty God, as we come to honor you and to worship you, we are thankful for your presence with us. We are thankful for the promise of your presence and for the reality that we see of that as we look around us and see those who have gathered with us today. Lord, may you remind us of your faithfulness and your goodness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are thrilled to have you here today. We're thankful that Trevor is here to provide some special music for us a little bit later. And uh, I got to tell you, last Sunday night we had a wonderful time. A lot of couples came together and they uh, did the little cornhole fellowship fun. And uh, you saw some of those pictures uh, of the real McCoys winning and Justin and, and Krista coming in second place. Their team name was House Divided. So don't get the wrong impression if you're visiting here. We are, we are together, but we're just having a little fun with that. So uh, wonderful crowd this morning, wonderful worship. As we sing joyfully today, I'm going to ask you to stand. Let's worship and adore our Lord. Sing on out. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround me, earth and heaven reflect. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Sing with us this third. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ the Brother, all who live in love are thy. Teach us how to. Each other, lift us to 
opportunities to learn how to love and work with one another. One of them is called Sunday School, and we're thankful for our Sunday School teachers and for you that were able to go today. Can, let me encourage you to continue, and let's continue to put God first in all that we do because he is our rock and him who we trust. Let's sing this song together, Cornerstone. built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Amen. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless and before the alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. I encourage you. You know, someone told me a long time ago, let go and let God. And so uh, let him grow in you. He'll make a difference in your life. Amen. Uh, let's read together. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Psalms this month. And uh, we're, I want us to read aloud together God's word from chapter 22, uh, verses 22 and 23. Let's read aloud together. 
I will proclaim your name to my brothers. I will praise you in the congregation. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. All you descendants of Israel, revere him. Amen. Praise God to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Once again, we're thankful that you're here today. You come from all kinds of different directions, and uh, you've been through different things. But one thing that's the same, you can stay standing, choir. Uh, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his hope is each and every day. And so we're going to, the choir's going to sing the first verse, and then uh, we want you to sing aloud with us this song, Living Hope. Sing with us. Who could imagine? Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of Kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the Oh. 
Brother Freddie, come lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you. It's good to be here, and it's good to be able to come and to praise the Lord, and we want to do that today, and we want to go to Him in prayer, and everybody just bow their head, and let's just uh, do that. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Lord, we have seen blessings in our life in the past week and so. We ask you, Lord, that these blessings will just go forward, and Lord, and they will multiply. But more than that, Lord, we'd just like to see growth in each one of us. We ask you, Lord, to to be a blessing to you on what we do, what we say, and how we go about it. We ask you, Lord, to bless us today, and Lord, uh, not only us, but each and every one that's in here, because, Lord, I see new people coming in. I ask you, Lord, us to be a blessing to the new people. We ask you, Lord, as they come in, that they would be ministered to, and we ask you, Lord, that as they come, they will also be ministering to us, probably. We ask you, Lord, for your blessings today and the message that we're going to have and bless brother Durbin as he brings that message we ask you Lord to forgive us and just give us an open mind and Lord open our ears where we can hear what's going on in the name of Christ our Savior amen thank you Thank you, folks. Take your Bibles, turn, if you would, to the first chapter of Psalms, Psalm number 1. While you're turning there, if you will, let me encourage you, if you have your Bible, to keep it open. We're actually going to look at the first three verses of the chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3 of Psalm chapter 1. Thank you for being here. Those of you who are visiting, we're extremely glad that you're with us as well. And uh, we trust that we will all go away in a few minutes saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord, okay? Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, I want to preach to you from the subject of the power of a positive life, the power of a positive life. And we find that there are no less than seven of those things we're going to see in these next few minutes that show us a positive life, okay? Psalm 1, verse 1, we begin reading. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. 
his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Let me remind you, Brother Mike said earlier that we were looking at the book of Psalm now through the month of February. The significance of that is Baptists have always loved uh, to have some uh, special things. Uh, used to have a study that we called January Bible Study. They would pick a book uh, out of the Bible and they would promote that book, give us uh, some resources, or let me say, let us buy some resources. And uh, then they later called it the uh, Winter Bible Study. Uh, it is still available this particular year. It is the book of the Psalms. So our reasoning uh, is that you'll be able to follow along as we will record some things uh, uh, and post it on the website. We will preach from at least four Psalms through the month of February. And uh, by the way, the little booklet that uh, they have provided for us did not have Psalm 1 in it. But let me tell you why I chose Psalm 1. The Spirit reminded me that everything else in the psalm is significant. Uh, and to understand that, we need to know that there are two types of persons. Uh, and when I say that, I'm not the judge, but the Scripture tells us there are there what we find in verse 1. He that walketh there in the ways of the Lord, but then in the latter part would give us the reality of the ungodly are not so. Well, we're going to look mainly this morning at the godly man, okay? And that is what I'm calling uh, the power of a positive life. Now, to begin with, uh, we see here that it tells us in verse 1 that the godly man... Uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, I know he doesn't use the word the godly man, but he says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So the first thing we need to see, it begins with a godly man's walk. You have learned through your lifetime something that I've learned also, and that is uh, once a child is born, uh, that child is nurtured with milk, that child is nurtured there uh, a few months later with some baby food, that child grows, that child develops, uh, and then one of the significant times of that child is when he or she takes their first steps. Do you remember that? I remember vividly when our girls took their first steps. Uh, I remember when our first grandchild took her first steps. And you would have thought uh, that we were celebrating some large victory. And really we were. And that is that that child had begun to walk. It is significant for me to remind you that one of the first things you learn as a child of God, as a person who has been born again as a person who has confessed your sin to Christ uh, for privately, but also who confesses uh, your faith in the Lord uh, uh, publicly. One of the first things you do is you begin to learn to walk. And the Scripture tells us we learn there that the man is blessed who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now there's a couple of verses on the slide that we have there. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. We find the prophet Samuel would write uh, in chapter 22, verse 37, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. You understand now, what we're looking in those two verses are is the reality of walking, the steps uh, there that the psalmist wrote about. And then in the book of Samuel, where again it talks about the steps, God enlarging those steps. Something I remember, I remember it well, is that any child who begins to walk will fall before they learn to run. You know, the, the simple truth is this, that learning to walk uh, is not an easy thing. 
Why? Because turning loose of whatever we like to hold on to for our support or our protection, uh, we love the comfort of knowing that stability that we find from that piece of furniture, etc. I will tell you that the spiritual walk, as you have surrendered your life to Christ, it is not uh, an easy thing to learn. However, let me remind you that the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us. He is our teacher. He is our guide. And because of that, the Lord teaches us to walk. So we see the first thing about a, the, or the power of a positive life is there a godly man's walk. Secondly, we're going to look again in the same psalm. We find it in the same verse. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Yes, walking. You've learned to walk. Then uh, we learn to stand. We might, be, we might be toddling a little bit or tottering a little bit, but uh, uh, the Scripture tells us that we've learned to walk, but then uh, we do not need to be standing in the way of sinners. Uh, now, there's a couple of ways you can look at that phrase, could you not? You know, if somebody is in, in front of me impeding uh, my progress, I could say they're in the way, okay? However, we could also look at it this way, and that is that, hey, he that standeth not in the way of sinners, the way of sinners being perfectly known, uh, if we're not careful, uh, you know, as a believer, it would be possible to ease up beside of them uh, and to become common with them, uh, and before you know it, our ways does not differ from their ways. Uh, our walk might not differ from their walk. Uh, and because of that, what might happen is we become, uh, we, we become persons who live a complicated life. Uh, you say, why, Pastor, do you say that? Because the ways of sinners... Uh, is definitely contrary to the ways of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 is giving us some encouragement here. He said, Enter not in the path of the wicked. Uh, go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass by it. Turn from it. Pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to fall. Do you realize today that Satan would have nothing uh, more uh, pleasing him than if he could cause a child of God to stumble? Satan could be no more pleased than he could take us down today. Just know that, okay? Satan would love to destroy your young testimony. Satan would even love it if uh, he could take your life. Why? Because uh, he is the author there uh, of death, and as a result of that, we see he knows his end and he wants to carry as many as he can with him. There are people today whom this verse would imply, and I do know it to be real, there are some people who will not rest until they cause other people to stumble. See, God works through people, doesn't He? Can I remind you that the adversary, Satan, likewise works through people? And for that reason, we don't need to be standing in the way of sinners. Why? Because their paths are not the path in which you and I are going to grow in the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you might be thinking, well, preacher, if we don't know sinners, if we don't have some type of knowledge of sinners, if we don't have some type of friendliness to sinners, we'll never see people saved. I didn't say they can't be your friend. I said we can't be walking or standing in their way, okay? Well, if you remember the case of Peter in the New Testament, how many of you remember the Lord told the disciples one day that every single one of them would leave him? And old Peter said, hey, not I. He said, you, not, you, you might not, uh, can count on these guys, but hey, I will not leave you. You know what Peter was doing before the next morning? 
He was standing in the circle of sinners around the devil's fire while Jesus was being uh, uh, there, there questioned there before his crucifixion. I promise you, folks, the way of a positive or the power of a positive life begins with a man's walk. But secondly, it also has a hinge closely attached to it that has to do with a man's way. And that way is not uh, like the way of sinners. But we need to be separate and come out from among them because God's way is a right way, a righteous way. See, the psalm begins, it's simple, is it not? Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth. See, I like that uh, progression you're walking but before you know it we've stopped so there is when digression begins to take place and the third phrase of this says this uh, nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful did you know you are a perfect illustration of these first three phrases first of all you have walked in have you not you have stood just uh, as you came in. And now you are sitting. Do you know the Lord said that is a perfect example of a man uh, that has a positive life or a positive influence in his life? That is that he's walking there, not in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not going to stand in the way of sinners or the circle of friends there, but he is also not going to sit in the seat uh, of the scornful. Now, uh, John Gill, in his exposition of the Bible, says uh, the, uh, the scornful, when he talks about a man's witness, the scornful may be meant proud and haughty persons in opposition to the humble and the lowly as in the way of believers. Psalm uh, or Proverbs 3 and 34 said, uh, Such who are proud of their natural abilities, knowledge, and wisdom, of their honors and riches, or of their own righteousness, and despise others, or such who are desperate in wickedness, of whom there is no hope. So we see three quick things. Uh, we see there that there is a godly man's walk. Uh, Nothing more beautiful than to see someone has recently surrendered their life to Christ and then they begin to take those baby steps of faith. Now, I'm not calling you a baby. I'm saying those baby steps of faith, okay? Some of those steps could be like, hey, worship. Boy, that, that's a big change when the Lord comes in your life. Secondly, we could think about places we go, people we see, we could think about the books that we read, the Bible becoming the most precious book uh, that there is in our lives. So we see a godly man's walk. Uh, secondly, a godly man's way. Thirdly, a godly man's witness. I pray you have a positive witness. I really do. I pray that someone could not say of you, Oh, I saw him sitting over there with that bunch of hoodlums the other day. And you say, what's a hoodlum? That's just somebody in the South who aren't worth much. Now, I'm not calling you one, but that was just a word that we used 50, 60 years ago. You say, how did you know? Well, I are one now. Not a hoodlum. I am one of them over 60s. Folks, did you know it's a challenge to live a godly life? Did you know it's one of the greatest pleasures there is to live a godly life? Friend, let me just encourage you to know this, that to live in the ways of the Lord is one of the greatest pleasures uh, that I could possibly introduce you to today. You know what? It's better than just being a Baptist. It's better than saying that you're a Methodist or a Presbyterian. Hey, you are a child of the King. And because of that, you are desirous to live like his child. Hey, the godly man's walk. Fourth, now there's the godly man's want. Uh, the scripture says in the sequence of that psalm, he does not sit in the seat of the scornful, 
but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. The godly man's want. The scripture tells me he's not going to want for anything. Now, folks, that is a challenge. And the reason I say that is because we are in the world, if we're not careful, we still begin to live like those people of the world. And that same advertisement that's promoting that uh, Ford truck, and it's pretty and shiny, and it's brand new, and you want to ride by the car lot and know you can't afford to buy it, but you want it, you want it. You want it, and let me tell you something about wanting something. If you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to get it. Not just trucks. Almost anything else there is in life. But the beauty of this verse is that not always have our wants been satisfied, our wants have been changed. Aren't you glad to know that you can uh, say with all, with, with all uh, glory to the Lord, that where once we were desirous of things, the Lord has begun to take that stuff away. The reality, folks, is real. Uh, it's not just growing old that, that accomplishes that in our life. It's growing up that accomplishes that in our lives. Oh, look at it. The godly man's want. His delight, though, is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalm 94, 19 said, In the multitude of my thoughts within me thy comforts delight my soul. Romans 7, 22 said, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. I'm so glad Paul would give us the uh, courage to be able to see that we are in a constant battle. And that inner man and that outer man, that carnal man, is uh, at odds with one another. And the reality is the inward man is who we're talking about that gets us uh, to see that positive life. And as we allow that inner man to grow, the Scripture tells us that our want uh, can be brought into the subjection or submission to our precious Lord. The godly man's want. Now, I can say this. My want uh, has to be totally kept at check. Now, do you understand where I'm going there? Uh, been a Christian 50 years or more, but my wants still have to be kept in check. Why? Because we live in the world. You see the things of the world. Uh, we no longer want a bigger house. We no longer want uh, a shinier car. But let me tell you, there's some area of our life, if we're not careful, that our want can get us in trouble. The godly man has want for nothing. Why? Because he's spending his time in the Lord's Word, and he's meditating in it day and night. Some of you tell me about what you read in your daily devotions or maybe your Bible study. Some of you don't just simply tell me what you read. Some of you show me what you read. You say, how do you show somebody what you've been reading? Because your life begins to take on change. And as a result of that, what happens there is there's maturity that is becoming evident in lives. Now, fourth, there is not only, or fifth, there is not only a godly man's want, but a godly man's wonder. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, the river has always been a significant place. And when I say the river, I'm talking about a river, okay? In my younger days, I loved to spend time at the river. You know, we would fish the river. We would swim in the river. Uh, we just had fun at the river. You say, well, why didn't y'all just go to a pool? Did you know I, can, I grew up in a neighborhood where there was only one pool, and that was the pool at the Lions Park in Patterson. Not everybody on every block had a pool, but you know, there was always that old black water that we could go swim in, the river. You know what he's telling us here? Our lives, uh, as a positive life, 
we become in his vision like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Yes, those same trees that we jumped out of into that black water, but yet we still live to tell you, be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I'm reminded as you would motor down the river, or as you would walk down the river, you would come to a bend in the river. And as that bend in the river would have a big tree right in the corner, and you could see where the water had begun to just erode all of the dirt. Some of the city people call it soil. To us, it's dirt in the south. But anyway, it had eroded all of that. And all you could see is a bunch of jumble of roots. And you could ask yourself, how is that tree surviving? Well, the scripture tells us that we are like that. We are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. See, the system that feeds that tree, its nutrients, and it gains its water, is those, that deep-rooted system. It looks like it's just sitting there. But, oh, God has a plan, doesn't he? Because that support system is running deep there in that tree. Now, folk, our lives are like that. Our support system, Albert Barnes, uh, would give us notes on that. And as I look back at that, he would say, planted by the rivers of water, it is not a tree that springs up spontaneously, but one that is set out in a favorable place and that is cultivated with care. You know, if you study the New Testament, there are parables, you remember? There are parables about a tree one place, I remember. That tree had been placed there, and that tree wasn't bearing any fruit. And you remember, uh, uh, the owner wanted to cut it down, get rid of it. And the plea was, don't do that yet. Let's dung it. Let's cultivate around it. Give it a supply of nutrients that it needs, and give it some time. You remember the next tree, or the next year, that tree produced? Friend, God wants us producing fruit. Therefore, He has placed us where He has, and we're like a tree planted uh, by the rivers of water. There's three things there on the bottom of that slide that I'm always minded of there. And that's, first of all, many people place emphasis on who you are. Or if we want to look at that in the first person, we would say who we are. Well, the longer I live, the more I realize that I'm a nobody but I know of somebody being Jesus. And that because of that, He has made us, or He has made me who I am. But yet there are those who want to magnify who you are or where you are. But I think the most important thing you could decide today is whose you are. See, that's why when we think about the power of a positive life, we know whose we are. We belong to Jesus. Paul would say it this way in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. He would say, what? No, you're not. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which is the Lord's. Folks, a positive life is rooted in the Lord. So now we talk about a godly man's uh, walk or a godly man's way or his witness or his want or his wonder. Think about a godly man's weight, not W-E-I-G-H-T. I better be very plain on this, okay? Let's talk about the W-A-I-T, the weight. You know, it's easier to get the other kind of weight, isn't it? Matter of fact, I'm going to go sit at a table. If you sat at it like I do, you'd want, you wouldn't have any wonder about why I put on a little weight over the 20 years I've known you. But the harder, harder weight in our life is W-A-I-T. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I would believe right now, as I said that to some of you, you have an immediate, you had an immediate uh, thought in your mind about something that you've been praying to the Lord about. Or something you've been asking the Lord to give clarity on. You know, the godly person has a weight. You know why I say that? Because he said, that tree bringeth forth his fruit. 
in his season. We're in a season right now. How many of you know that? You knew it last Sunday, didn't you? You had to put on a heavier coat. Some of you men wore your long handles. You know, that's how you tell when you're getting old, when you can't stay warm. We're in a season. Friend, let me tell you something more important than that. We're in a physical season, winter. But we're also in a spiritual season. Would you apply those same, three, those same four seasons of the year to the seasons of life? You know, the spring of the season, maybe we've just been born or born again. The spring of the season brings us into the summer of the season. We begin to bear some fruit. The fall of the season, we begin to get a little stable. We begin to sort of find our security. And then we hit the winter season. Seems like nothing happens in winter except leaves fall. But you know, the reality of this is what is happening in the plant life, what is happening in tree, the life of trees right now is a significant time of their life. If you're in a, a winter season of your spiritual life, let me tell you something. Don't get too antsy. Don't get too impatient. Why, preacher? Spring is coming. Where you might be dormant, where you might be stagnant, where you might have grown to a place in your life where you don't have spiritual desire, wait on the Lord. Spring is coming. God wants you to grow. So does He want me to grow. See, a godly person or a positive life, the Scripture tells us, shows us something about the godly man's weight. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing. I told the people in the first service this morning, don't you dare go home and call your friend and say, hey, the pastor described you this morning. And then see what they say. And then you read to them, verse 14, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age and be fat and flourishing. We might resemble that remark. But I'll tell you something. God's got a whole sermon there. We never get too old to bear fruit. Positive fruit. But likewise, all of who we are is because of the Lord's nourishment spiritually. And friend, we can say prayerfully that we are coming to a place in our spiritual lives that we're fat and flourishing because that's a very positive statement. Sixth thing, a godly person's will, his leaf shall not wither. Now, isn't it amazing how he used the analogy here of the trees that tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that tree that bears its fruit in season, that tree that its, that its leaf never withers. Now, I've never saw a tree like that because all trees sooner or later are going to drop some leaves. Now, if you don't believe that, come on down to the house in about another month. Those evergreen trees, they're going to drop the leaves. You would say, hmm, Y'all got leaves on your trees down there? Yeah. But he said there spiritually that the positive life will have a life that the leaf doesn't wither. Friend, can I tell you that what the Lord is giving us there is the beauty of how he provides and allows us to survive. I close with the seventh thing here, and that is a godly person's works. That godly person's work is whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You ever saw someone in life, and this is not a spiritual application, but you probably saw somebody in life that seemed like everything they touched had turned to gold, but everything you touched would turn to dust. 
Well, let me tell you, the Scripture tells us that for spiritual people's positive lives, uh, that He makes what we do to prosper. It's not always the location of where we are or the vocation of what we do. It is the simple grace and glory of our Lord. In the Bible Studies for Life Sunday School curriculum, for six weeks, we'll next week enter the fourth week of that, but for six weeks we have, we're going to be having looked at the life of Joseph. You remember the life of Joseph in the, in, the, in the Old Testament. You remember that Joseph was belittled by his brothers. He was despised by his brothers. He would have been killed by his brothers, but one interceded. But then he went and he was falsely accused. He got to prison. Then we find that the butcher and the baker, and you, you know the story of Joseph. The Scripture tells us that Joseph still in serving God, God had his hand on him. Why? Because God was going to make him prosper. Friend, I don't know what God's up to in your life right now. And you probably don't know what God's up to in mine because in some ways I don't know. But I know this. Whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever God does, he will allow us to prosper. Don't look for your prosperity down at the bank. You might not find it. Don't even look for your prosperity on your pew. You may not find it. Look for your prosperity in the Lord. And friend, you can read a lot about it on Facebook, how to do it. You can read about it, what somebody else says. But I'll tell you something. If I was looking for the ways God was going to make me prosper, I'd keep my Bible open. As you bow your heads with us today, can I ask you, are you wanting to be like the godly man that we see in Scripture today? The godly man there, the Scripture tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I give you the first phrase of verse 4. The ungodly are not so. See, there is a great difference in the godly and the ungodly. Not only is it an earthly difference, the most important difference, it's an eternal difference. If you've never trusted the Lord Jesus, let me tell you, take the baby steps. Right where you are, confess your sin to the Lord. You could say something like this, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, I confess all my sin, missing the mark before you. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Save me by your grace. And friend, if you have prayed that prayer, you have taken the first step. But sometimes we need to take other steps. You know, you need your good church family to grow in grace and knowledge with. You need also, if you haven't already, you need to be faithful in Christian baptism. Baptism is only an outward expression of an inward faith. But we would love to guide you through that process. Brother Daniel is leading some studies on that uh, even as we speak uh, on certain evenings. Father, thank you so much. Lord, your word, your word not only is quick and powerful, but your word also satisfies the soul. Lord, this is a time of invitation, time of commitment. I pray you'll have your way in all lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand together if you would. Brother Mike will lead us in a song of commitment, a song there of decision. You be faithful if you would.
Let's pray. Father, thank you. Lord, you are my only hope. Lord, we have help around us, but Lord, you're my greatest help. Lord, be with Scott and Amy. God, just, just cover them with your great arms of protection. And Lord, as we worship and work together, God, use us all in great ways. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love you.